Hey everyone, so today I'm taking a look at the N64 flash boards available from Retro Circuits. So, we got the programmer right here and we got a board right here. Let's go over and take a look at some of them. So, this one's pretty cool. So, this board will support 4K, 16K, SRAM, and even flash RAM game saves. So, it's available in 16, 32, and 64 megabyte ROMs. So, even Conqueror's Bad Fur Day or Pokemon Stadium 2 can fit on here. Now these boards do require a little bit of soldering, but it's not too hard. It's just a few jumpers on the back here. So right over here, you got your spot for your game saves. You got the 4K and the 16K EEPROM. Then a jumper here if you want to use SRAM or Flash RAM. And right over here, this is probably one of my favorite features. It comes with every CIC built in, so you can run pretty much any game you want on here. So if you leave all these open, it'll default to the O2 EEPROM or CIC. Then you got Star Fox, 1603, 1605, and 1606. And right over here, if you want to do Flash RAM or SRAM, you do have to pull one of those chips from, uh, from an original game. Now, I did ask about this, and he is working on a board that you won't have to pull SRAM from. That board is probably not going to be out for another few months. He's still doing some testing on it to make sure everything works with it. However... I did ask about Flash RAM, and he said he's probably not going to be able to do Flash RAM, so if you want to build one of those games, then you are going to have to steal one of those from an original game. And this is almost the final revision of the board, so there are going to be a few small changes. These holes right over here, they're not going to be needed on the final board, so they were removed. And one of the things I did ask about is the contacts will be gold-plated. And right over here you got the programmer. So there are two different models of the programmer. There's the basic version and a deluxe version. I got the deluxe one right here. Got your USB port right there to connect to your computer and your power switch. So it's really easy to program. I actually have a separate video that I'm going to link down in the description. It goes over erasing and programming the boards. So this is going to be more about testing and actually soldering the jumpers and loading up a few different games. So let's go ahead and get to it. And along with the boards and the programmer, he also sent me an SRAM for games like Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And a Flash RAM, which Majora's Mask, Pokemon Stadium, Mega Man 64, games like that use. So the reason that there's this little fin on top here is that it can accept either the, the narrow or the larger sized SRAMs. This is the SRAM right up top here. So some of them are wire like this and some of them are narrow like the Flash RAM here. All the Flash RAMs are narrow. And he also sent me this board that didn't have any components on it, which I always like seeing bare boards. And as you can see right up here, there's a bunch of drill spots in between these two rows of pins. This is in case you're either not going to use flash ream or s ream you can snap this off. And it'll still fit inside the metal shield inside the original case. Now there are some data traces going along this side of the board. So if you are going to snap it off, you're going to snap the board that way, so the traces will bent inward towards the board. So i got a set of needle nose pliers right here. I'm going to go ahead and see how that works. Alright, all the drill holes are right below the needle nose. So now I'm going to go ahead and bend it towards me. Yep, that worked pretty well. So as you can see, it is still a little bit rough, but I think it will fit in the metal shielding like that. And if you're having a little bit of trouble, you can always grab a file and then file it down a little bit. Again, you would want to run the file this way, so the traces will bend towards the inside of the board. And that way they're not going to bridge against the metal shield and ground out some of your address and data lines. Let me see if I can find one of my empty shells and take a look at that. Okay, I got my Yoshi's Island. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And then we'll take a look and see how that board fits inside with the metal shield. And then there's two small Phillips head screws right down the bottom. And that pulls off like that. And there's the original game. Oh, 
All right, let's see how well this fits in here. Seems like it's getting caught on the edges here of the game, or of the case. Now you know what? It's because I had the same thing in backwards. Silly me. And there you go. Let's see if we can zoom in on that there. Yep, that fits in perfectly. And like I said, if you need to file it down, you can always do that. Just like I said, make sure you file it so that the traces are going to go in towards the center of the board. Alright, so I think we're going to take the other one. I'm going to go ahead and program it. I'm not going to do that on camera. Like I said, I have a whole other video dedicated just to programming. So, I'm going to go ahead and program that one, then I'll come back, we'll start some jumpers, and we'll see what we can do with that one. Okay, so I got the board program, decided to put Super Smash Brothers on there. I'm just going to use the 6103 CIC, and it's also going to use SRAM for its save. So, I've got the soldering iron heated up, so let me go ahead and solder a few jumpers, put in the SRAM, and we'll see if we can get that to load up. So, the SRAM is going to go on the back of it. And there's a little notch right up here that's going to tell you which size pin 1. I'm going to go ahead and put it on some sockets so I can remove it if I want to. And let me go ahead and solder that in. Alright, so now we got the SRAM in place, now we just need to set our jumpers. So there's going to be one right here for the SRAM. And is there another one? Yep, so there's two. So this one right here with the three pads, you solder the bottom two of those. And this one right over here. Then I'm going to need to bridge the pad that says O3 to set the proper CIC revision. So there's two SRAM pads. And zero three. So there you go, you can see the SRAM in place. That no, that little divot right there indicates pin one. And there's a silk screen on the board to show you where that lines up. So we got our SRAM jumper, both the SRAM jumpers, and zero three. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the N64, and we should get Super Smash Brothers. And something I forgot to show earlier, right over here, on the front of the board, there's a little PAL jumper. So, if you're going to be playing this on a PAL console, and you need to set PAL mode, you just bridge that one right there. So, I have an NTSC console, so I'm going to leave that one open. And also, here's where you would insert the battery. I'm just going to be using this board for testing, so I don't care about game saves, so I'm not going to bother to install battery on this one. Alright, so now the board's been programmed, we get the SRAM on our jumper set. Let's go ahead and put in Nintendo. And we should get Super Smash Brothers. And there you go, works perfect. And I did buy a few extra boards from Retro Circuits. So let me show you some ones that I programmed on those. Alright, here are the other two boards that I bought. So this one is a 256 megabit or 32 megabyte game. And this one I programmed Mario Kart 64, so you can see I got the 4K EEPROM jumper set. And it uses a 6102, so no jumpers for the CIC. And on my 512 board, I went ahead and programmed Conker's Bad Fur Day. 
So this is just a quick test because it uses 16K EEPROM. So you can see you set both of those jumpers right there. And it uses the 6105 CIC. And it's the largest size ROM that the N64 supports, so I just figured that'd be a good test. So let's go ahead and try out Conkers first. And I just programmed the board so there's no game saves right now. So both the 4K and the 16K EEPROMs, they are built onto the board. It's only if you're going to make an SRAM or a Flash RAM game that you're going to need to steal one from an original board. And let's go ahead and try out Mario Kart next. There you go, that's really all there is to it. Used by the programmer and a few blank boards, and you can program your own N64 games. So of course there are some limitations. Unfortunately, Super Mario 64 hacks, I cannot get to load. So I did check out the EverDrive forums. There seemed to be a lot of mixed information on there. Some people saying that you could hex edit the ROM somehow and get it to work. Other people say only texture reskins work. But I couldn't get anything to load up. So yeah, these are in production right now. I think they're about another four to six weeks out, and then you'll be able to buy them from his store. Okay, and last I'm just going to go ahead and show off the different game saves. So, first one I got here is Mega Man 64, which uses Flash RAM. Yeah, you can see I made a few different saves there. And next we got Mario Kart. I went ahead and played through some of that to make a game save. Now you can see the trophy saved. And now Conquer, which is 16K EEPROM. And there's that game save I did earlier.